Good morning, podcast. Welcome to the Pierre Tillman Show. I'm Pierre, your host, and you're on the best podcast on planet Earth for photographers, videographers, and creators in general. I'm not kidding, simply because today I've got another awesome guest. His name is Jordan Hammond, and Jordan is pretty famous on Instagram for his travel photography. He clearly represents that new generation of travel photographers. At 25 years old only, he's traveled to more than 41 countries in this world. It's kind of insane to imagine, and I hope it will inspire you to really get out there and shoot and push your own craft. Because you know what? Jordan didn't even study photography. He started studying uh, marketing, maybe like a lot of you. And one day he picked up his camera and decided he would make it happen. After the rest is history, he's really managed to get those epic shots, grew on Instagram, and nowadays he's traveling full-time for his photography. That is an incredible story, and you can find a lot more details on his Instagram at Jordan Hammond, which is J-O-R-D-H-M-M-O-N-D. In this episode, you will see... We're not going to dwell into the story. We're going to talk about something that is a lot more practical, that is really, really cool, which is how he shoots. We will talk about how he organizes his shots, how he shoots them, how he plans them, and how he interacts with locals. Because as you may know, some destinations are a little bit overshot, which means that the local people end up posing and being model versus uh, being just like candid shots. So this is a very, very um, controversial topic in the photography world, and I am very happy to be talking about it with Jordan. His philosophy is great on that, I have to say. Also, we'll be answering your questions. Obviously, what to do when you're shy and don't want to shoot people. Is China a good destination for photography? And also, what his go-to setup would be if he had only one. All right, let's get started. Let's welcome Jordan to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast, Jordan. Yeah, thanks, Pierre. Thank you so much for having me, man. Dude, thanks a lot for taking the time because I know you're super busy traveling all around the place and a few times you have uh, uh, times down, I would say. I imagine you want to spend it with your family. So thank you so much for being here with us. No, it's so good, man. It's really great to finally uh, catch up with you. Cool. Jordan, we're going to go straight into the topic because uh, as we were just chatting just before the podcast, you said those photos of China, which I, I said I really, really love that you took of daily scenes uh, of the life of a farmer, for example, you said were really difficult to capture. Can you can you tell me more about that? Yeah, sure, man. Um, so I think what I meant by that was they they were definitely the most the most difficult I probably had to take because... It, on on two fronts one it usually takes a very long time to to find these locations um so oh, got it so yeah like some some of these the photo shoots with the farmers and the buffaloes took me months of planning to you know to try and figure out where they where these locations were and and how we how we would organize the shoot and number two is just the location usually you know these places are they're quite far out they're not on like the typical tourist route so a combination of those two things meant that yeah they're probably the most difficult to to take well that's crazy so the, the one the one with the um, with the buffalo going through the river uh, the, was it a lake or a river uh is that where it's is it just the farmer and the and the buffalo uh there is a dog no that's uh with the dog also oh with the dog yeah um so that's over a river oh river Sounds good. And you said the one with the with the tree and the farmer and just the buffalo is that the most difficult one? Um, yeah, I would actually say the one going across the bridge, the one that you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say they're all. Uh, I'd say they're collectively. You know, they're they're pretty. They were pretty difficult to figure out. It took me months and months of of planning, and I, I was having to use like Chinese internet web, yeah, you know, Chinese web pages and contact some of my friends that live in china to ask them to help me figure it out but but we we got there in the end so that's good. awesome yeah that's a, i think it it so for anyone listening who uh, have no clue what we're talking about <laughs> just go to a uh, jordan hammond uh profile on instagram and you'll see just scroll down you'll see exactly what i'm talking about i'm linking it in the show notes anyway but uh, if you want to have a, a, a look while we're chatting, if you're driving, don't do it. Otherwise, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, they, they were pretty difficult to, to figure out for sure. Um, I mean, some of them, like the first series I did with uh, was like a farmer and a buffalo going over like a very small bridge. Yeah. Um, 
I found those by pure chance. I mean, I'd been researching them for months, but I'd, I'd only found the village name. But it turns out there were four villages with the same name in uh, in that area. Oh, so, wow. Uh, dude, but, but, you know, like, this is actually how I found it was I, I crashed my drone in, no that, way. in that part of China. And I put it, I think I remember putting it on my stories and just saying that, Hey, I've crashed my drone in this place. If anyone knows of a store in the nearby area that I can get one from, please let me know. And a girl messaged me from the nearest, the closest city to me at the time uh, was Guilin. And she messaged me from there saying, Hey, I know a shop. I can take you there. So we met up. Uh, we went and got this new drone and I had this photo on my phone and I said to her, like, look, I don't suppose, you know, you know where this is because I've been looking for months and I just can't find it. And she, uh, she said, no, you know, I don't know where that is, but my parents used to hike in the surrounding area. So I'll ask them. And if, you know, maybe they can help you. And that, that evening she texted me and said that they knew where it was and they'd hiked there maybe 20 years ago. Oh wow! And uh, yeah, so they picked me up in the morning. Um, That's crazy. And yeah, I, I'm, they... ki- I'm kind of curious because um, you know the, the the shot with the the buffalo and the farmer and the cormoran and the is that the same region and the fisherman? Um, okay, so the fisherman and the very first farmer photos that I published. Yeah. Um, going across a very small curved bridge. That's in the same region. Got it. Uh, That's in the same region, but the most recent photos, uh, I've got like a farm, a farmer under a tree with the light rays and a farmer going across a long walkway bridge. Um, those are in a different province. Got it, got it, got it. I, I feel like um, at least for us Westerners, I'm going to call ourselves uh, or people living in uh, in US or Europe, I feel like China has so much to offer and still very undiscovered in a way, um, maybe due to the nature of travels. How much time do you, do you spend there? Do you want to spend more time? What, how do you feel about it? Uh, about China as a whole? So like we spend quite a lot of time there. Um, We lived there for one year. We lived in Chongqing um, from 2015 to 2016. And we've been back, you know, like five or six times to China since we left in 2016. Uh, and each time we go, we usually spend about a month there. So we've spent a lot of time there, you know, in the last, uh, quite a lot of time there in the last few years. And um, I think it's, you know, testament to the fact that I really enjoy traveling there. Um, and I would agree with you that I, I find it most, you know, to be quite, undiscovered in in many like areas so that's kind of why we keep going back just because we want to be able to document these places while there aren't so many people visiting them yeah <laughs> yeah that's uh, i mean that's kind of our, our search as travel photographers is always to find those places that it, it's not that no one went there it's like few people and it feels like you're discovering yeah. something new yeah of course like I, i definitely wouldn't claim to be like you know discovering places yeah um, yeah no no way you know like i'd i'd seen these photos before i took them so yeah to exactly them. yeah like i had to get my inspiration from somewhere yeah um but yeah you know it, it's just for me it's all about visiting places that most people aren't i think you know like there are obviously some places I've, i'm going to and traveling to that that are quite busy and that's you know that's still great you know i love visiting those places too but when, when it when it comes down to like what kind of photos do I want to take and what do I want to share with people more often than not it's it's the I, I would like to share the the things that people haven't seen so often yeah that makes sense that's uh, that's really cool the um, there was I, I can't remember do, do you feel like it's it's changing a lot um for example I think if I'm correct there is a I think it's in Burma Uh, there is a place where the the fishermen are on boats and they're like holding like giant sticks with one foot, one foot. And uh, oh, yeah. and I I heard from people from friends who went there that now they're barely <laughs> fishing and they're just posing for photos. Yeah. Uh, um, so that's the same with the stuff I do in China. You know, it's no different to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fishermen with the birds. You know, they're not. They're certainly not fishing. Mm-hmm. they're like that you know they're out there it's it's like a i see it as like um photo tourism in a way got it yeah, yeah. It, in a way it's 
and I think it's great for them. I mean, there is no reason they shouldn't enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Enjoy, enjoy it. And at the same time, they try to keep some authenticity uh, towards the, yeah, just the rec- recreation of what it what it's like. Because if if they make enough money, they don't really need to fish. But that's not. I, I guess that's another de- debate, and yeah, uh, exactly. and how it's being handled. But, but I think I don't think it's a bad thing. Like um, I've been to Inlay Lake in Myanmar, so I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and I was pretty surprised when I first went that you know these these um, fishermen, well, actors, I guess you, we could call them. They were like asking for money, and I was a little bit confused at first. But then I thought, you know what? Like I, I still I've wanted to take these photos for a long time, and there's no other way I'd you know not very many other ways I'd be able to take them. So. If people expect uh, others to live the same way they lived 50 years ago, still in 25 years, I think that's a bit misleading. So it's totally cool for people to ask for money to to be posing yeah. with the yeah, old, old style, basically. Yeah, because, you know, they need to be able to afford a living too. So yeah, and it, it's just a job, right? And, and what we're doing is just trying to create like a piece of art. And as long as we're open with people and, and we tell them that, you know, this isn't, this isn't entirely genuine you know we've like we've paid these people to do this but but you know i I don't see a problem with it like it we wouldn't be able to take these photos any other way so yeah i think they just wouldn't be there anymore those guys so (laughs) and and like they may have you know these are things that probably happened you know like the the fishermen they definitely fished at some point in their lives it's just they don't do that anymore because it's not as i guess profitable as taking you know, being an actor or being a model for these photos is so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if anything, we've we've you know we the photographers and you know we the creators have like created this uh, situation. Yeah, I th- it's it's very. I mean, especially with social media, it's very tricky what's happening with the influence we have now. Yeah, I've seen places in Indonesia, and I kid you not, and I'm sure you've seen it in two months. In just two months, after a few pictures being posted by like inf- big people, people. Um, <laughs> on Instagram, the, the place would literally change in two months, and they have a, part, a paid a paid fee, a paid guard, and a paid I don't know <laughs> what. I'm like, <laughs> what what is happening? And it's it's so quick in those countries. It's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty pretty scary in some places actually. Yeah, have you had bad experiences with that or? Yeah, I've had a few experiences, um, you know, certainly in Bali. You know, I can certainly speak about places in Bali just because I live there. But um, I remember coming to Bali two years ago for the first time, uh, about two and a half years ago now. So in 2016, and a lot of the a lot of the places in Bali, they weren't particularly like overshot or, you know, I hadn't seen a ton of photos of them before. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, 2017 came around, it was getting busier and busier and then 2018 seems to have just gone a little bit crazy um especially for bali as well you know like i've really noticed the difference there yeah it's uh bali is uh, it's clearly completely over i mean it's not overshot it's just like paris now it's like paris it's very hard to find anything new there i would say bali is overshot um <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i would you know like no, I live there and spend so much time there. I don't actually take photos there anymore. Um, Got it. Yeah, I don't, that and I feel like um, it, I don't. It's a great place to take photos. Don't get me wrong. There are so many, so many beautiful places there. Um, but I, I do feel like um, you know, if you're just starting out, it would be a good place to to come and like practice. You know, like taking photos and and editing photos and stuff like that because there's such a variety of things to to shoot. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's the place to go if you're looking to you know really grow on like social media or anything like that um or or to really like challenge yourself photographically because i think the problem with like visiting these places especially if you're just starting out or you're trying to grow a new account is that thousands of other people have been there and done it before yeah that's that's the 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 tricky part (laughs) especially if you as you mentioned if you're trying to grow you want to find something that is kind of different uh, where fewer people have seen that is still looking very uh, dramatic, I would say, so that it it gets some, uh, some, 
interest from people um at least in our travel field guys if you're listening and if you're more into street photography it's it's a little bit yeah. different but when you're into travel it's always about those epic places or like epic shots of which location we can find what people want to see in the future uh i believe and especially you jordan because you have a big account so you must have a huge influence ah uh, yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> i mean maybe you just started five uh five photo tours in china right <laughs> by with your photos <laughs> i would love to just start photo tours in china that's something i'm thinking about doing in like 2019 yeah all right uh, that's a good idea i know a lot of people are interested in that yeah i think it would be super fun especially because we know a lot of places that well, whenever I seem to go to China and post like China photos, people seem people really engage with them. And whenever I've spoken about potentially leading a workshop there as well, they've been even more interested. So that's awesome. Yeah, I I, um, I posted uh, I sent an email the other day to to uh, to my my newsletter and I asked them if some of them would be interested in more of an adventure workshop. And uh, I have to say that gets very tricky because at the moment. At least for me, uh, the moment I'm talking about real adventure, uh, <laughs> you have so many few people that are interested versus something that's a little bit more chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I think I kind of scared people by, are you ready to walk six hours a day uphill? And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're starting to scare me now, actually. <laughs> yeah, but I have a few places I want to hit. And I, I met this exploration uh, expedition photographer not long ago in uh, in London. And it was okay. amazing. The guy climbed the Everest. No way. No. Oh, yes way. So he did the Everest. And I was like, what? And, you know, as a photographer, it's always harder because you take photos at the same time. And then he said, yeah, yeah, we did it without Sherpas. So if you're listening, if you don't know how difficult Everest is, it's like crazy on your body. And doing it on your own without Sherpas, which, which means no porters, is, is double crazy. So <laughs> Yeah, that's mental. And I was like, and I asked him, did you use oxygen? He's like, not until the last push. I was like, okay, well. <laughs> this guy's mad. This I know. Mad. And the guy was just smiling and looking totally like anyone else. <laughs> totally calm. So yeah, we were chatting about uh, about doing uh, about going on on photo expedition together. So that's why yeah, uh, incredible. That's why yeah, that would be really cool. Uh, yeah. Tell me, I, uh, Jordan, I got a question from someone uh, on Instagram and uh, and that question is really good, especially since we talked about the farmers and all that uh, before that you shot. Uh, uh, right, so it's Rabbi Zera on Instagram. He's asking, do you approach people uh, or do you sneak shot? Do you show them the photo? How do you how do you work with uh, with people when you take photos? Um, I don't. So when I'm taking pictures of people. Um, so a, a lot of the stuff I take for Instagram, say if we, if we look at some of the stuff I do on Instagram, let's say the farmers and the buffalo or, or the fishermen, for example, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of that stuff is organized. So, you know, we, we've spoken about it beforehand and, and, you know, we, we've kind of agreed that I'll be taking photos of them. So it's not, you know, that's not so much a problem. I don't really need to ask for their permission because we've already arranged it and, and, you know, it's been paid for, so that's fine. And there are certain instances, you know, when I'm taking like street photos or photos in rural locations, um, in, in some places I would ask for permission. Mm -hmm. Um, I try not to get like right up in people's faces or anything like that. Um, yeah. if, if I was to get like up close and personal with someone, then of course I would ask them. I'm not just going to like put a camera in front of their face, you know, from half a meter away and yeah, expect that to be okay. Um, if I wanted a more like, if, if I wanted something like more close up, then yeah, I've, I would definitely ask for like permission or just say, hey, you know, do you mind if I take a photo? And then I would always show the person the picture. Usually whether I've asked them or not, I would go and show them because most people seem to appreciate it. So, Yeah, I think it's uh, that, that's what I, I was sharing in, in a few of my videos. Uh, I was dealing about talking about street photography and that question came up a lot, to be honest. That's why I wanted to have your insight. What also. do you do? I shoot and then I go talk to them yeah, or yeah, yeah. I, I look at them. I take a, I make a huge smile and I point at my camera. I point at them. Then we all start laughing. I take a photo and I show them. Sometimes they're not happy. 
in the sense they just don't want a photo taken. And I totally respect that because I would hate if anyone took a photo of me and I didn't want to. Yeah, of course. You know, you just have to respect people. Like, I think that's just all it is. Yeah. And a lot of, so a lot of photographers who were commenting after on the video, they're like, yeah, but I'm too shy to talk to people, etc. Do you have any tip on that? Yeah, just, <laughs> just don't be shy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> just do it. Yes, that's simple. I mean, th that is the only solution, isn't it? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're not asking them, so you're not going to get those photos. I honestly, like, just, just trust in, trust in yourself. Imagine, you know, you come out of that scenario with like a couple of amazing photos, and then you start to think, oh God, imagine I asked you know someone every single time. So yeah, it's the only kind of advice I can give, bro. Like, it's the only way you're going to get the shot is if you put yourself out, out there and ask so yeah i think that's a great advice if you don't get it if you don't ask you're never gonna get the shot you want so yeah, think exactly. about think about the shot you want before and, and and get it and you're just asking a question you know it's not it's not impolite like you're you're just interested in taking a photo of someone it's not rude if yeah. they say no that's fine there'll be someone else you can take a photo of like it, it doesn't matter Yeah, I've seen uh, photographers who like to, to um, for example, let's say they, they see a person very char charismatic walking down the street and they, and they literally tell that person, hey, I think this or this uh, looks really good on you. Do you mind if I take a photo? So it's a step further. And I think that works even better in all co in like countries like the US or Europe where people are less inclined to just be like, yeah, take photos of me. Because if you go to India, this is literally how it happens. Everyone's jumping in front of your camera. Yeah, uh, yeah, they are. That's so true. <laughs> so it's a different vibe. But uh, if you sh tell people what you like about them and why you want to take photos, it, it also really, really helps. Oh, that's a really nice idea, actually. That one, I kind of yeah. like that. I've never tried that before, but um, I'm usually trying to take like more candid kind of stuff. So I'd... I usually approach them afterwards, but I like that too. That's really sweet. Yeah, that's for, I, I feel like it especially good in, in our countries, as I mentioned, because I don't really run into so many problems abroad, or at least in uh, in like Asia or South America. Uh, people yeah. are, are pretty open for, to to it. And I and like like you said, I love shooting that person without them knowing and showing after because Uh, you get really cool stuff and people usually get excited after they're like oh wow that looks really good <laughs> yeah 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 that's so i love that i love showing them saying that they're like impressed by it. that's so cool yeah i <laughs> jordan i have a fun one yeah. since uh so for anyone listening if you have the questions that are very basic uh, about jordan like uh, where is he from what's his favorite destination etc you can check out on instagram he has a faq and i wanted to go a little bit away from it uh and, and really yeah, dive into other aspects so i've got a super fun question for you i mean super weird jordan if you were stuck in one place for five years with one camera and one lens what place would it be and what gear would you take oh my gosh um which place in camera oh damn um i would i would probably spend that year in china probably because um let me think yeah i would probably go to china because it's so diverse mm -hmm. it's so diverse and and there's so much left for me to you know to see there not only not only is there a lot for me to see there i feel like i i believe you know deep down there must be places that have not been photographed yet yeah so i feel like there's something left out there for me in china perhaps that no one's seen yet and you know i would i would love to spend five years trying to find something like that and for gear how many lenses can i take one one lens that's why it's one. difficult that's so mean um though i don't have it i would probably take a 2470 got it uh 2.8 and my 5d mark IV. 2470 it's such a great all-rounder yeah i know right i don't <laughs> i don't have it i i have a 1635 50 and a 7200 but i feel like i need that if i was to be there for five years then i would need that middle ground yeah 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 same i couldn't decide on the 2470 either <laughs> 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 the only reason is when I, i i like to shoot that 16 especially when i do the videos And yeah. uh, and 16 also, whenever you have a crazy landscape, it's really nice to, to squeeze, squeeze it in. 
Yeah, it's perfect. I just think, yeah, for five years, I'd be too limited on the 16 to 35. So, yeah, yeah you, have, you'd go have, crazy. You, you'd go like, I need a 17. <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd start fights with, with people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll actually I'll work for you for two months. Just give me another leg. <laughs> That's funny. It's funny, man. That's awesome. So China, China is a, is a big highlight. Clearly, that's uh, that's really nice to hear. Um, I lived there for six months, like years ago. Oh wow! In where, 2000, where did she live? She lived in Shanghai in 2007, I would say, or well, six, 2007 or six. Ah, uh, okay. Did you go and visit? Yeah, I did go and visit. It was freezing cold for oh, that's Christmas, so-, so so cold. Oh, that's um, so great. That's that's really nice that you were able to get out there. Yeah, and we went to on the we went to Beijing and we went on the the Great Wall and the Great Wall. It was simple. It was sunny, but it was like minus two degrees Celsius. It was brutal. Damn. Yeah, that must have been so cold, man. But she did explore like Yunnan and uh, other regions, and she said she loved it. And there is so so much to see. So what you what you're saying right now just amplifies what she said ten years oh, ago. Good. Yeah, there's so much to see. Yunnan province is so beautiful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As well, and, that's one of my favorites. Oh, is it? Yeah, definitely one of my favorites out there, bro. It's the one with the most. Uh, how do you call that? With the most ma- mountainous or like very sharp mountains, no? Uh, it does have a lot of mountains. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if it has the most, um, but you you could well be right. I'm not sure. Got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's I, I haven't been place, myself. So diverse. I haven't been yet. I should go this year. Yeah, you really should, dude. Um, you have to come back with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let me know, and I'll I'll take the tickets. I heard there are a lot of sales right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know we um. So I'm going on a trip tomorrow. I got tickets recently to fly from London to Budapest in Hungary. Um, it's about two and a half hours away, and it cost me thirty pounds to fly. Oh there. wow, that is yeah. so cool. That is yes. really cheap. Do it's you have so a bag cheap. with that? Uh, yeah, so I got bags on top of that, but it might have been like five pounds more, and I get to take like two bags on on board with me. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, I just bought a ticket to New York, return from Chicago, which is like three hour flight or two and a half, and it was almost under a hundred dollar, like a hundred one dollar. It's that's I, so crazy. I was like, wow. Usually it's double. <laughs> yeah, that's so great, right? I'm looking at going to Colorado. Have you ever been there? No, I haven't. I've I've not spent much time in the States. I've only been to New York for uh, like four or five days. Um, so I'm actually coming back to, I'm going to the States on the 10th of January. Oh, cool. Which is quite soon. But um, I'm going to South Dakota and I've, I've only got like three or four days there and then I'm flying back home. Got it. Well, if I can give you a recommendation, is hit Utah. It's it's mental. I, I, I've never seen that in my life. It's It was ridiculous. Oh, yeah, that was your favorite? Uh, I mean, we went on a world tour, so 2017-18, like for a whole year. And I have to say, Utah wow. is in my top three. It's crazy. Oh, that's so nice. Where, where, about, where in Utah would you recommend in particular? Get to Las Vegas, rent a car, just, just take, I think it's Highway 12, and just go all around. And I couldn't do one mile without stopping to take photos. It was just a really, oh, really so weird great. place. <laughs> you go from the moon to to uh, to i don't know to mars yeah to mars to then like white sands it's so weird yeah uh, it's awesome. beautiful yeah i'm looking forward to that i'm just trying to struggling to find time you know to, to get all these trips in. <laughs> yeah yeah that's true jonah i'm gonna ask you one last question and after i'm gonna be mindful with your time so i'm gonna let you go if it, you can give any tip to anyone listening uh, in the creative space, and I mean by that, if you have any cool photo idea or concept that you think people should explore, what, what would it be for 2019? Uh, for 2019, it would be, let me think. Honestly, my, you mean for like uh, creatives out there, you know, doing a similar thing to me? Yeah, for example, a, a photographer, he's a little bit bored with what he's been doing. He'd like to explore something a little bit different or, or think of new ideas. What would you suggest? Well, I mean, you know, if, you, if you're looking to go and try something different, then it's like I said earlier with the, uh, with the um, oh, God, what was it? When we were talking 
about asking people if you know for their permission when we take photos mm-hmm. um you just got to go and do it haven't you um you know if you're creative he's looking to explore another like creative outlet then the simplest simplest thing to do and, and my only advice would be to go and try it um but if i was to be giving people advice in 2019 for um in this creative space um, like photography videography anything like that i think it would be to uh, to focus on you know like I think it would be to focus on finding, you know, more unique kind of locations. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that's, it's just because that's something that I really love to do is trying, trying to find something unique, but I think that's what people should be really looking to do in, uh, in 2019, like in the past, past year or past six, seven months or so. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of people posting like very, very similar things on Instagram. I noticed like a lot of the same locations like coming up and up and up again. So it would be, I think it would be really sweet to see people, you know, trying to, trying to reach out and explore new places in, uh, in, in 2019. That's a good one. So explore new places and uh, basically yeah. make a feed of the top Instagram posts or whatever you see and then try to do your opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kind of try and do it. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I know a lot, I know people visit these places, you know, for a reason because they're really beautiful. But yeah, I which think... doesn't remove from the beauty. I think, uh, like, just because you've seen a lot of photos doesn't mean uh, Paris is less beautiful, you know, or the Eiffel Tower. It's still exactly. magical, but uh, at least for us, I imagine you're talking for people like us. It's really try to find other places that are gonna really wow you. Uh, yeah, because you've never. I mean. I've been to places like that. And it's just insane. You arrive and you're like, oh my God, this could be the best place in the world. But no one knows about it. That's great. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? Man? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Jordan, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, I want to wrap up here and I want to invite people to check out uh, your story that is uh, in your highlights on Instagram. You can find all the detail on how Jordan got started in life and how he got into photography. I don't want to dwell into that too much because I, I think too many people talk about it uh, with you, Jordan. So <laughs> it was good. I appreciate it, man. It Thank was good so to much. get a little insight on how you shoot and how you approach things. Uh, yeah, Jordan, it's really good to chat with you too, man. Jordan, why, where should people find you or or come look up your work? Uh, you can say you're going to find all my work on Instagram. It's just at Jord Hammond. Okay. That's where you're going to find in my work until I believe this month in yeah the month of January 2019, we're going to be starting YouTube. So keep your eyes peeled for that as well. Oh, nice. Look at yeah. that. Cool. I've got some, uh, I'll get you on uh, one of the, the photo challenge I play with then. <laughs> yes, that'd be sweet. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, Jordan. Thanks a lot right, for yeah. your time. Have a great day. Thanks a lot, buddy. Bye. I only have a little request if you like that episode if you like the podcast get on your Apple podcast or Google Play or wherever leave it a five star review send it to your friend take a screenshot right now send it to a friend or tag me in your Instagram stories it means the world to me when you do that and I'm reposting you guys because it makes me really happy to see that you're listening I really want to blow up the podcast in 2019 so please share it with everyone let's do it together and let's keep having awesome guests if you've got suggestions I'm always open to that And in terms of questions that you can ask for the podcast, you can drop them on the Anchor.fm app. You can literally uh, drop a voice message, record it, and uh, then I will play it in the episode. Or you can tweet me at Pieti Lambert or on Instagram at Pieti Lambert. All right, with that being said, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. And remember, go say hi to Jordan on his Instagram. Tell him you come from the podcast. Love you guys. Have an amazing day. See you in the next episode. Bye.